Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Thank you everyone that submitted questions for this week's Quora q and I know everyone's surprised that it's back earlier, but I think it's a good thing that they're spacing episodes out just so that it lasts longer. It seemed like you guys were all pretty interested to learn about Kubira and what she's been doing the last three years. And I know there was some confusion about why Korra is in the Earth Kingdom hiding out. They're gonna explain that in the next episode, so don't worry. Don't forget that the weekly giveaway restarts every week, so all you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber and leave a comment on any of the Korra videos that I post. So, let's answer some questions. Careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. But here we go. Question number one, Matt asks, Do you think that Zaheer was working with Kuvira to destabilize the government so she could take over? Was she a member of the Red Lotus? No, I actually don't think that she's a member of the Red Lotus, and I don't think they were working together. I don't think that Kuvira has anything to do with the Red Lotus. I think that she just saw a job that needed to be done and she took it on and things just kind of got a little out of hand or things will get a little out of hand. Obviously it's been three years so there's a little bit of explaining like we're not really sure what happened during that period to make her the way she is now. Question number two, Sventu Sventu asks, will the White Lotus deal with the Red Lotus? I actually think that they're going to wrap that up. I don't think it's going to be as big a plot line in book four. I think that largely ended at the end of book three. The White Lotus hasn't been doing so hot during Legend of Korra. So yeah, hopefully they'll lay the smack down. They didn't come right out and say it, but it does seem like the Red Lotus is largely contained. Like either it wasn't a really large group or the White Lotus dealt with it during those three years. Question number three, Death God Riku asks, do you think that Toph is a member of the White Lotus? Yes, I actually think that most of the surviving members of Team Avatar, at least from Aang's time, are members of the White Lotus. During Book 3, Su Yin said that Top basically went on a world tour, like on a sojourn, just to travel around. I think we'll find out what that is, even if she is a member of the White Lotus. It's possible that had something to do with some White Lotus business that she was on. I will be a little disappointed if they don't explain that. And even though they don't have a lot of time in each episode, Hopefully we'll get like a Zuko Toph moment or we'll get like a Team Aang moment where all the surviving Team Aang members get together. Legend of Korra is all about the new characters, but Mike and Brian did say that they're trying to include as many of the old characters as possible. Like they really do enjoy putting them in. Question number four, Joe Swampson asks, do you think it's bad I'm more in favor of Kuvira than the Earth Prince? No, they definitely want this to happen. They want your loyalty to be tested. That's why the Earth Prince is a total douche. Mike and Brian said that when they created Kuvira, they wanted to create an analog of Korra. Like they wanted a Korra type villain, obviously a bad version of Korra, but they didn't want the villain to just be another old man. Someone who was on the same type of path as Korra, just in a different direction. That's why they want to test your loyalty. So if you feel loyal to Kuvira, don't feel bad. It was intended that way. If it helps, just think of her as evil Korra. Question number five, Anik Mady asks, do you think that Kuvira will go after the Fire Nation? I actually think this is mostly going to be localized to Republic City and the Earth Kingdom. If you remember the board that Kuvira was looking at, there was a bit of a gap where Republic City would normally be. If you remember in Book 3, the Earth Queen said that Republic City was built on Earth Kingdom land. So I think that Kuvira is going to try and take that back. Because of the way all the nations try to work together, I think Republic City is going to try and get the other nations to help defend it. So it will be like an everyone versus Kuvira fight, even though Korra is going to be the one to do battle with her directly. Question number six, Cyrus Wadia asks, do you think that Korra will find Toph on her own? Yeah, she was definitely wearing her fighting getup and it looked like she was in the swamp somewhere. So it might be wherever she's been hiding out. I really am hoping we're going to see like a Luke Skywalker, Yoda, Dagobah situation with Toph. Like she's hiding out in the swamp and Korra is going to be running obstacle courses with Toph hunched on her back. Question number seven, full-time slacker asks, do you think that Kuvira is evil or just an opportunist? No, I don't think she's totally evil. I think she's heading in that direction. I think it's like an Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader situation. Kuvira didn't start out evil. She just saw a situation, a way to solve it, and things got a little out of hand as she went along. I mean, it's been three years, so there's a lot of explaining to do. But just like Anakin Skywalker, I think that Kuvira got an idea for solving the Earth Kingdom's problem that just involved an incredible amount of force. So she's going to crush everyone in order to bring them into line, which is obviously a bad thing, but she will unite the Earth Kingdom. So she's slowly just getting more and more evil without realizing it. Question number eight, Korra Olsen asks, why is Korra fighting in the Earthbending games instead of another element? I think it's just meant to imply that she is inside the Earth Kingdom somewhere just because they're all dressed in Earth Kingdom garb. Question number nine, Camille asks, 
Who do you think the core is going to back this season? Kuvira or Republic City or someone else? So I think what's going to end up happening is, is it's going to be everyone versus Kuvira. So obviously I think the core is going to side with not Kuvira. Based on the amount of time they had to tell stories, I don't think that they're going to be traveling around too much with the army. So I really do think that they're just going to go after Republic City. In Republic City, like President Raiko will just appeal to the Fire Nation as well as the Water Tribe. And those people will come and back Republic City. So essentially it'll end up being Republic City and everyone else versus Kuvira. The interesting thing though is that Kuvira is a champion of the people and obviously the Earth Prince is kind of a douche. So Mike and Brian are just trying to make it a little bit more ambiguous. Like, Kuvira is better than the Earth Prince, but she's evil. And the Earth Prince isn't evil, but he's just a terrible, terrible person. Question number 10, Corey asks, Why does Mako have to work with the Earth Prince? Why doesn't he quit if he doesn't like it? So I think whenever the Earth Prince went into hiding, the Republic City Police were responsible for his security. So that's why Mako started with him. I think that Mako's sense of duty is what keeps him from quitting. Like he's just so goal oriented that he does what he's told. I will be interested to see how Team Avatar comes back together because at some point they will come back together. Like I do think that they're going to reunite even though they've all kind of been pulled in different directions. Thank you everyone for submitting questions. These are always a ton of fun to do. My next bonus video is going to post on Friday. So what I'm going to do is I'll post a bonus video, then I'll do my episode review, and then I'll do a Q&A. So I'll be doing three videos for all the episodes. I know everybody wanted double episodes this season, but just remember, the slower they air episodes, the longer it lasts. Congratulations to this week's giveaway winner, Catherine McGuire. You win an Amazon gift card. I'll be messaging you on your channel for details, so be sure to check your inbox. I'm also going to be doing a charity drive for Charity Water in a couple weeks. I'll make a special announcement, but I will have some special Legend of Korra related perks with some cool stuff that you guys will be able to get. There'll be like a separate video explaining that, so don't worry. Since this is the last Book of Korra, if there's anything special that you guys want to talk about for the bonus videos that I do, just let me know in the comments. Right now though, click here for my top 10 Avatar villains and click here for my episode one video. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five. Everybody have fun rewatching the episode. Episode two next week. <laughs>